الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واتقوا فتنة لا تصيبن الذين ظلموا منكم خاص منهم خاصة وعلموا أن الله شديد العقاب صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله all praises are for Allah عز وجل Allah سبحانه وتعالى our creator our nourisher our sustainer Allah who has blessed us with numerous blessings and favors Allah who continues to bless us and be kind to us as believers we should always express our gratitude and show thanks to Allah for all these blessings that he has given to us and we should continue to supplicate to him to bless us with good lives and good health and good iman with his security with his protection with his care until we leave the face of the earth the verse of the holy quran which i have recited to you is a very very beautiful verse like all the other verses of the quran and like others it gives us a very important teaching allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the holy quran in surah anfal that is verse 25 speaking about fitness and speaking about mischiefs and trials trials that will come on the face of the earth allah who is the all knower whose ilm and knowledge is complete his knowledge is accurate and his knowledge is perfect and he knows exactly what will come on the face of the earth at what given time and he also knows about those people who will fall into those things but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has from the very beginning guided the believers and has sent scriptures revelations via the messengers that came in the past to instruct the believers about certain things so that the believers will always be on guard that they will not be caught unaware so that the believers will not become unmindful they will not become negligent and they will not become blind to the realities of life again and again the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has warned us and it is about such such teachings the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself says ittaqu an firasatil mu'min beware of the deep insight of a believer because a believer in reality sees more than what other people can see a believer does not only see the surface he sees beneath the surface and he could recognize things that other people may not be able to recognize because when he looks at something he looks at it empowered with that iman the light of iman that allah has embedded in his heart so when he sees uh, things and something has happened and people are happy and they are enjoying it and they like it and they like the sight of it he sees that that thing is really an azab and a punishment from Allah where no one's supposed to be happy about it is a time to rush towards worshiping Allah and supplicating to Allah and this is the life of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam people who are asking for rain because of drought because of the fact that there has been no rainfall there will be shortage of water people are praying and they are hoping that rain will come so when they see the clouds in the sky they become happy and so too it happened at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
that when everybody saw the clouds in the sky, they became happy. They were extremely happy, saying rain will fall and rain will come. But what did the Prophet ﷺ do? He started to make dua to Allah. He started to become scared. You know why? Because at the time of Noah ﷺ, the people saw the same cloud and they became happy. But little did they realize that it is the azab and punishment of Allah that was hidden in the clouds. Lest it should happen that that be the azab. He turned to Allah and he begged Allah from the good of it and for protect, for, from protection from the bad of it. So a believer sees things differently. He understands things differently. And it is because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us, has given us guidelines and teachings so that we will always be on the alert. We will pick up on things. We will learn our lessons from incidents, from occurrences. We will learn our lessons from things that happen around us. We will see them. We will take our God. And in this ayah of the Holy Quran, subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says to us, to the believers, the ayah preceding this verse, the message is where Allah addressed the believers. And Allah is speaking to you and I. And he says, What to call, O my believing, believing people, O my believing servants, O the believers, what to call fitna tan la to see ban ladina volamo min kum kasa. Beware, take heed. Be concerned, be afraid, and beware of the fitna, the trials, and the mischiefs, and the sins that will come, and will not only touch the wrongdoers from amongst you. Beware of the azab that may come, the punishment of Allah. Beware of the trials that may come, the sins that will become widespread. The sins that you will see, you will live amongst, that will surround you. When those things come, it's not only the wrongdoers and the sinners will fall into it. Allah says, no. You also as believers will fall into it. And that is the lesson Allah is saying. Sins come and they are widespread. Every type of sin. Whether they are kabair or they are sagair, whether they are major or whether they are minor. Wrongdoings, indecent acts, immoral acts, acts of transgression, crossing the limits set by Allah, violating the laws of Allah, becoming agents of Satan and propagating what Satan wants on the face of the earth, all these things will come. Sins that come around us, they become a trial and they become trials for us. Why? Because when a sin comes in front of a person, Allah is testing him to see if he has such a strong amount of faith to stay away from it. Or would he be a hypocrite that while saying he's a believer, he falls into it. That is a trial for him. It comes in front of a person. It tempts the person. The Quran says that when that sin comes in front of a person, Satan decorates it. He makes it beautiful. In it there is disaster. In it there is destruction. In it there is the fire of hell blazing. But what the individual sees is beauty. It's beautiful. It's good. It's attractive. The feet wants to run, want to run towards it. The hands want to grab it. Everybody is attracted to it. Because as the Quran says, shaitan makes it, beauty, makes it beautiful, the shayateen. It looks beautiful. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said, this world is green and alluring. It is sweet. It looks sweet. It will bewitch you. It will charm you. It will enchant you. It will captivate you to the extent that it will pull you 
totally into it that you would forget what you are and who you are and why you are here and where you are going after here. It will pull you. It's like a magnet. The Prophet wasallam said, the world is sweet. It's tasty. It's alluring. It will lure you into it. And Allah, knowing that is like that, he has put you in the world to exist. He didn't put you in paradise to exist. He wants to put you to a trial. Jannah is not a place for trial. Jahannam and hell is not a place for trial. That is a place for punishment. And the other place, Jannah, is a place that having done your good deeds, here is that, subhanallah, that guest house and that beautiful place that Allah is honoring and will honor you with. Allah has put you in. Why? So that he will look at your action. See how you behave. See what you will do. Okay. Once upon a time, before coming here, you had no problems in accepting him as your Lord. <laughs> you did say when your Lord questioned you, Alas to be rambikum, am I not your Lord? Aren't you not going to worship me? Aren't you not going to believe in me and do as I say? The, all the servants says, Qalu, they said, Bala. Yes, indeed. Allah says, well, I will put that statement to a test. Let me see how much you can keep up with it. Let me see how much power you have within yourself and courage you have within yourself that even though shaitan will come to you from all the directions around you, you will be firm on that faith and that belief that you have which is in your heart. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, beware the fitness that will come, the sins that will come around you in the form of trials, pulling you towards it, wanting you to come to it, wanting you to partake of it, wanting you to change a little bit, to compromise in your iman, in your belief, in your actions a little bit, those sins will come around you. They will be trials to you. So Allah is telling us, O oh believers, beware of that. Don't, don't be off guard. Be on guard. Be alert. Watch out for these things that are coming around you. Shaitan will want you to justify it. So how he will get you to justify an action which is sinful, an action which is disobedience to Allah, is that he whispers in your heart. He puts his waswasa in your heart, making you analyze it and then justifying why you should do it so you can prove to others why I had to do it. But we are accountable to Allah. And Allah knows, as the Holy Quran says, certainly man is a witness to his own self, even though he may provide a lot of excuses. In other words, if something is done, you know it's wrong deep within you, and you want to prove that it's not wrong, you're going to bring a lot of excuses. Everybody around you will believe. Allah says, but... You are a witness against your own self. You know what you are saying is wrong. You know deep down in your heart you knew it was wrong. But you are providing a lot of excuses to justify what you have done. So Allah is telling us beware of that fitna. Beware of those trials and sins that will surround you. Because it will not only touch the wrongdoers. So Muslims should never feel that I have Iman. I perform Salat five times a day. I do good. I do all my fast in Ramadan. I'm trying to be good. Allah says no. Not, it doesn't mean that you are an untouchable. Allah says it's going to hit you. It is going to touch you. Allah says so these things and trials and the sins, it will not only come to wrongdoers. Get that straight Allah is saying. Not only to the wrongdoers. It will come to you also. It will pull you into it. You will fall prey to it also. And you will also engage. Being a believer, you will also be engaged in such trials that come to you in the form of sins. But immediately he sends us a message. But don't feel that you will get into it and that's it. 
You can justify yourself? No. Wa'alamu. You should know very well. Anna Allah, Allah, your God, who is looking at you, that He is shadidul liqab. He is severe in His punishment. So when you know something is wrong, and you still go and do it, Allah is severe in His punishment. He's going to seize you for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about these things that will come around us at different points in time. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had gone at length to warn us also so that we Muslims, we will never find ourselves unmindful. We will always be mindful of what we do, of what we say, of the types of decisions we make in our lives. Because the worst thing a human being can do in this world is to live a life of regret. And the worst thing he can do in the hereafter is to regret for his wrongdoings. Because here and there, regret wouldn't help you. When you have done something and you begin to suffer the consequences, regretting would help you. Regretting may help you change your future, but what has been done has been done already. Consequences have taken effect and the wrongdoings have been registered as wrongdoings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive you, but those harms that have been caused on account of the wrongdoings of a person, they would have done the wrongs already and harms already. And when we die and we live a life that we were not conscious of the fact that we have to be obedient to Allah, in the hereafter, a decision would have already been made. So what we will suffer in the hereafter, we will suffer the consequences of our actions we did already, not what we are going to do over there. It is what has been done already that will bring that result. So regretting at that time, it won't help us. So therefore, the Prophet ﷺ warned us also. He said, Badiru bil a'mal. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala narrated the hadith which has been recorded by Imam Muslim alayhi rahmah in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Badiru bil a'mal hasten to do good actions one of the biggest problems with us as Muslims is procrastination undue procrastination we are always putting off good deeds we are always waiting we are always saying tomorrow we are always saying next year. We are always saying ahead, ahead. And we don't even know if we're going to live until that time. And between that time when we are saying we will do it, and between that time, that comes and it parts us. And we, we go back to Allah without doing the good deeds. That's the state of a person. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, before fitna can take you over, before sins can take you over, before Satan can have the better control over you, and before you can become a follower of Satan, as long as you are worship of Allah, hasten to do as much good actions you can do, because the doing of good actions itself would strengthen your iman. It will form a barrier around you that shaitan cannot penetrate. It will form a force on you that Satan cannot penetrate. He will run from you when he sees that strong force of your a'mal and your actions on you. He won't touch you because you have built strength within yourself. You have built light within yourself. Allah sends his special angels because of your continuous good deeds on your right, on your left, ahead of you, behind you, Satan cannot attack you from any direction. And that's on account of your good deeds. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Badiru bil a'mal. Hasten to do it. Something comes to your mind and had to do, and you can do it now. Do it. Do not wait. Because you do not even know you're going to live for the next minute. He says, Badiru bil a'mal. Hasten to do good deeds fitna before fitness come over you and pull you into itself before fitness can come before trials can come before mischiefs can come before sins can come and dominate you and you become weak and you find yourself not being able to come out and that is what is happening as long as we continue to commit sin 
then committing sins becomes so attractive in us that doing the smallest good deed becomes extremely difficult. Because as Allah says, Qasat qulubukum, the hearts have already become very hard. The hearts have become hard because days and nights and years, months and weeks have passed and you have not done any good deed. Your hearts have become hard like a rock. You open a tank of water on it, it can't even penetrate because nothing can touch it now. So sometimes a person who is involved in sins, when you speak to that person, he will say, brother, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to get out of this thing, but I just can't do it. I'm trying, I just can't do it. You are speaking to the sisters, your sisters, your family members, sisters, mother, or wife, or sister, or daughter, begin to cover your head, cover yourself properly, wear the hijab, it's the law of Allah, it's a major sin, a kabira gunna, to actually walk the street, and walk in front of ghair mahram, non-blood relatives with their head uncovered, it's haram. It's not a matter of if and but. Allah has already given that law already. This attitude of I'm not ready yet, that is satanic temptation and waswasa. An evil prompting. When Allah has given a law over 1400 years now, who are you to say you are not ready yet? You are fighting Allah. Allah is your God. Allah is not your brother or your, your father. Allah is your God. He gave you life to be here. He's feeding you every day. He's giving you to drink every day. You go to sleep, it's with his, his breath. You get up in the morning, he gives you back your soul. Night and day, he's showering his favors. And you have the guts to say, I'm not ready yet. How dare a human being say something like that? Who are you to say? You are coming up as an equal to Allah. Like how Satan opposed Allah. When Allah wanted something, he says, no, I'm going to make them. You want to make them believers? I will make them unbelievers. He became an equal to Allah. You want something? I want something too. So when Allah wants something and want our sisters to wear, they say, no, oh Allah, we are ready yet. We are ready yet for this thing. Our sisters have to be mindful. Be mindful. We have to think about our hereafter. We have to think about our grief. You may live and enjoy life. You are happy. You are smiling. Oh, you look good without it. How do you look in the sight of Allah? Picture yourself. How do you look in the sight of Allah? Like a Satan? Like a monster? Because you are violating Allah's law? We become beautiful in Allah's sight when we obey Allah. But we become like monsters in Allah's sight when we disobey Allah. This is why the hadith says, when you are a believer and you have obeyed Allah and the time of your death comes, the angel of that comes to you in the most handsome form, such handsomeness you have never seen in your life. You go in the grave, the munkir and the nakir will come to you in the most handsome form that you have never seen. But if you didn't obey Allah and you committed sins, the angel of death will come in an ugly form. The worst that you have ever seen. When you enter the grave, the munkir and the nakir will come in the worst form. The hadith says, their eyes will be large, yellow, shining. Their facial expression will be the worst. They will be black. The hair will start from their head and it will go straight down to touch the toe. They will be huge. They will have weapons in their hand. And they will rough up and beat the person. You know why they are coming that way? Because they are actually a display and an expression of the deeds. They become the reflection of your deeds in the grave. Subhanallah. The angel of death becomes a reflection of your deeds when you are about to die. We go with good deeds, we have good to get. We go with bad deeds, we have bad to get. And the place of doing those deeds, it's right here, not after here. It's right here. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, he said, so hasten, because fitness will come to you. It will pull you into itself. You would have intended to do good, but your hearts have changed. Now you wouldn't do any good. And after becoming, after the hearts have changed, it becomes hard. So nothing can penetrate it now. So a man lives like that. 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says such fitness and such fitness and mischiefs and sins will dominate the face of the earth يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِ كَافِرًا A man will get up in the morning as a believer. By the time the evening enters, he will become an unbeliever. وَيُمْسِ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا And in the evening, he will become, he will be a believer. You will meet him as a believer. But in, by the morning, he will become an unbeliever. He said at that time, sins will become so dominant. It will become so widespread. It will take root in the hearts of the believers to such an extent that A man will sell his religion and he will sell his deen for the sake of some worldly benefit. He would not be bothered about what Islam tells him. He wants wealth. He wants money. He will sell haram to make money. He will eat riba to make money. He will lie to make money. He will cheat to make money. He will deceive to make money. He will do haram things in order to make money. He will sell his deen for the dunya. He's not bothered about what is halal and haram anymore. He's not bothered about what is good and bad anymore. He will break family ties on account of wealth. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari, Wallahi lal alaykum. He says, by Allah, I do not fear that you Muslims will ever become poor. Alhamdulillah, from that time until today, Allah has blessed the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prosperity has come to the Muslims from that time until today, wherever they live. He says, walakin, aqsha alaykum, an tabsuta alaykum dunya fatanafasuha kama tanafasuha wa tuhlikukum kama ahlakathum he says what i fear for you is that the world will open itself for you just as it opened itself for those before you then you will fight each other to get it and you will destroy each other as they destroyed each other that's my fear allah wouldn't starve you you wouldn't die out of hunger and starvation but you know what you will fight each other for wealth you will fight each other for power you will become just like those people in the past. You will break your family ties. You will break your family relations. You will sacrifice your family time and your family relations for the sake of this. And this wouldn't give you anything here, nor in the hereafter. The Prophet ﷺ said that will be the case. And when a man gets up in the morning as a believer and by the evening he's an unbeliever, it's not that a man, the Prophet ﷺ has explained to us in different traditions, it is not that a man will actually come to you and say, okay, I was a Muslim this morning, I'm no longer a Muslim. People wouldn't do that. The Prophet says by his action and his deeds, he would be out of Islam by the time the evening comes in. His actions will be so wicked. The thoughts coming in the heart will become so wicked. The things that he would have done will become so wicked. Though he thinks he's a Muslim, he will not be a Muslim. This is why in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a hadith recorded by Imam Abu Dawood and narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he said there will be people in my ummah who will deny the qadr of Allah. They will deny the qadr of Allah. They will reject the ordainment, the decree and the predestination written by Allah. He said such people if they become sick do not visit them. And if they die, do not go to their janazah. They are outside of Islam. He said another set of people will come. And these people will reject the teachings regarding the coming of the Dajjal. They will reject the concept of the Dajjal. The Antichrist. When the Prophet wasallam spoke about the Dajjal, he mentioned the bodily features of a human being who will come. How his eyes will be, where will he come from, how his body will be, what would he have in his hand, where he would go. He will be a human, he will be a physical body. The Prophet ﷺ said he would have two eyes but blind of one eye. And his eyes will be bulging out. He will not look like a monster. He will not look like a one eye giant like of the past. He will be somebody just like you. The Prophet ﷺ says, but 
certain people will come and deny the Jal. Look out for such people and don't be from among them. So we have to read through the lines of the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you and I begin to say things that Dajjal is this country and that Dajjal is that country and that Dajjal is this television set and that Dajjal is that, you know what we are doing? We are denying the description of Dajjal as given by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We have denied all those ahadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are making him into some object while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about a human being. He spoke about the physical features of that human being. He spoke about the travels of that human being. So this is why I'm saying the teachings regarding in the morning a person is a believer and by the evening he's an unbeliever. Subhanallah, it refers to the actions that will change the person. Although he may seem to be a Muslim, just as in the hadith of Imam Bukhari, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, on one night he got up, he was sleeping. Just sometime in the night, in the middle of the night, he just got straight up. He looked to the heavens. He said, Subhanallah, ma unzila layla. He said, Glory be to Allah. What type of fitness have descended to the face of the earth? Aiqidhu sawahib al hujar. Wake up the lady occupants of, occupants of the rooms. Let them go in salat. Worship Allah. Beg Allah. Turn to Allah. For rubba kasiyatin fi dunya. Ariyatun fil akhira. For there are many of those who are clothed in this world who will be naked in the hereafter. While commentating on that, some commentators have stated it means that there are many people who would do good actions and they will think to themselves they are doing a lot of good actions and their actions are valid. But when they are resurrected in the hereafter, they will be empty of any good actions, naked of good actions. Because what they have done, they have done other things that destroyed it. They have done it that was not correct. They have done it without ikhlas in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us about fat fitness. We also as Muslims must know that we are living at a time around us there are many, many fitness. There are many mischiefs. There are many sins, sins that are actually entering into the homes of the Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ said, hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, Usama bin Zayd radiallahu ta'ala, he says, we were walking with the Prophet ﷺ, we reached the outskirts of Medina. He looked at where some of the buildings of Medina were. He looked at them and looked up to the heavens. He said to the Sahabas, Hal tarawna ma ara? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? They were around him. He said, Hal tarawna ma ara? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Qalu la, ya Rasulullah. They said, no, messenger of Allah, we are not seeing. He says, inni la ara al-fitana taka'u khilala buyutikum kawaq'i al-matar. He says, right now, I am seeing fitness and sins and mischief falling from the sky, entering in the midst of your homes, just as when rain is falling and it will fall inside your house. That is what I'm seeing. That is what I'm seeing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Four great fitness will enter the home of every Muslim. Four great sins, grave sins will enter the home of every Muslim. The last of those four trials, mischiefs and sins will be Al-Ghina music. Do you know what he's saying? If music has entered already, it means the other three have already entered. This is the last of the four. We have to be worried. Music is a great fitna. It's a sin. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, music and musical instrument, it breathes in your heart hypocrisy. It will make you a hypocrite. Yes, you have Iman, but what is going on inside, you don't know. It's slow poison. Shaitan is working on your heart. And you know, slow poison doesn't kill immediately. It takes time, but it works. It breathes, he says, Allah has sent me to destroy al-malahi wal-mazamir. Allah has sent me to destroy musical instruments. This is a very great fitna. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has correctly said it. Four great fitnas will come. The last of it is music, musical instruments. If that is in our homes and amongst us, we really have to, to fear Allah 
and beg Allah to forgive us because the other three have entered already which we don't know about. So therefore, my dear respected and beloved brothers and sisters, I remind myself first of all and you, my beloved brothers and sisters, we are living in a time where we are going down closer and closer to the hour of the destruction. The signs of the hour of judgment, they are widespread. The sins are rampant and dominating society from every direction. We have to fear Allah, protect our Iman, protect our Islam. Because if they outside don't believe in the life hereafter, we believe when we close our eyes here, we open it to the hereafter. When we go in the grave, there is a whole new life. If we are worried about that, we will do the right thing. May Allah make us true believers, strong believers, Forgive our past and make us true believers until we live on the face of the earth.